Hello everyone. If you're seeing this live in our CTC group, just give me a minute. I'm making sure everything's posting where it needs to and recording. So I'll be with you in just a moment. We'll give everybody a chance to get in. Everything appears to be working. Give this just another moment to catch up. Okay, so I show 10 o'clock. I know it's very early for those of you joining us in California, so I hope that you will find this worth the getting up early. For those of you who could not join us live, I am recording this video and it will be posted on our YouTube channel for the CTC playlist. And it will also be here on our Facebook group. So you can go back and watch this later if you're not available right now. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And this is a new thing we're doing. We had many requests when I was doing videos for our main Facebook page and our YouTube channel that we get some more state specific and test specific content. So we're doing that through our Facebook group. So if you're joining us today, we're going to look at the C best and we're going to look at the math portion and I'm going to take you through some practice questions and we're going to look at some skills and really look at the language that those standards are setting for you. So I'm going to share my screen with you so that we can get started and we can do some practice questions together because I know that's what a lot of you are wanting. So give me just a moment to share my screen with you. I'm experiencing a little technical difficulty. Give me just a moment. I'm sorry, I apologize guys. I know you can see me, I'm working on it. Technology never cooperates when you need it to. Okay, it looks like I may have to shut down. My computer's giving me technical difficulty. So if we lose this, I will be right back. So if some reason we lose connection, I will rejoin you in just a moment. It looks like we're still working, so yay. Okay, I'm gonna have to open up a couple of things. Give me just a moment. It made me close all my windows. Okay, I think we're working. I'm gonna try this now, wonderful. Think this is working yes wonderful okay so yay for technical difficulties those of you who are entering the teaching field and trying to teach online I know you can relate to this it never works as quickly and easily as we would like it to unfortunately okay so I think 
you are all seeing my screen. Yay for technology cooperating finally. All right, I think we have a few people who've joined us, so that's awesome. Today we're gonna take a look at the CBEST math and we're looking at skill factor one and we're just gonna take the first piece of that, which is going to be estimation and measurement. So we're gonna jump right in. And again, this is gonna be recorded if for some reason you're not able to see this live. And I hope it's keeping up with me here. Um, yes, okay, wonderful. So the structure of these live videos that we're gonna do each week is we're gonna be, again, specific to your state and your test. And we're gonna be looking at some explanations of your standards or competencies or skills, however they're stated for your test. And we're gonna work through some questions together where I can teach you some strategy and some skills and provide some explanation. Um, it looks like the box with my face may be frozen, so I don't know why that is, but hopefully, you can still see the PowerPoint and hear me just fine. So um, we're gonna jump right in and keep going. If you cannot hear me, please drop a comment in there just so I know. Yeah, looks like you can hear me. Okay, so making sure that audio is working since the video's not. Let's take a look at this first skill that we're going to look at. So skill factor one for the CBEST, the California Basic Educational Skills Test, math portion, we're just going to look at the first half of that. And that is going to be on estimation and measurement. So what I want to note for you are some key words that exist in these statements. So it says understand and use standard units. That's going to be a key factor, standard units. And we have several things in measurement here length, temperature, weight, and capacity. And we're looking at the US measurement system. We're also gonna be looking at measuring links, so actually using a ruler, and then measuring perimeter. So if you see words in these standards that you don't know what they mean, please ask in the comments. I'll try to help you out with that. We're gonna understand and use estimates of time, and then we're going to estimate the results of problems involving addition, subtraction, multiplica multiplication, or division prior to computation. So one of the things on this test is you're not allowed a calculator. So that computation is going to be key. And we're going to work through some actual questions. So let's jump into those. Again, if you have a question, drop it in the comment. I should see it pop up. So let's look at this question. Now, all of these are pulled from the free public practice questions that are provided on the CTC exams website. So if you wanna go take a look at those, you can do that. But we're gonna work through these free questions because they don't provide you an explanation. And so sometimes you work these and you get it wrong and you know you have the wrong answer, but you don't know why. So I'm gonna see if I can help you with that. This question can be a little bit tricky. We're looking at length. So it says, use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. And the question is, if the actual length of the bridge is 4,200 feet, then what is the scale of the diagram of the bridge? So what we're looking at here is we're looking for that scale. And when they mean scale, we're looking at what does one unit equal? So that's what we're looking for. We had a number that we think we're gonna need right here, this 4,220 feet. Now what's tricky about this question is where the diagram of the bridge is placed on the ruler. A lot of people will come right here to the end of the bridge and go, well, it's six units. Now what's tricky, tricky, tricky about this is this we know when we teach children to measure we always line up the zero or the edge of the ruler with the edge of the object. But if you notice, this object is lined up with the one right here. So it's not actually six units. When we go from one to two, that's one unit. Two to three is the second unit. Three to four is the third unit. Four to five is the fourth unit. And five to six is the fifth unit. 
So here in this diagram, that bridge is five units long, okay? So now we're gonna actually work this problem. It says if the actual length of the bridge is 4,200 feet, then what is the scale of the diagram? So basically we know this whole thing right here is supposed to be 4,200 feet. If that's the case, then we need to split that up by the six units to determine what one unit would be. So this is a division problem. I'm gonna set that up. I'm looking at 4,200 divided by five. Now we've got a little long division here. I know I can't divide four by five, but I can divide 42. If you're rusty on your long division and you're calculator dependent, going through this kind of slowly so that you can brush up those skills. 42 divided, divided by five, there's not an equal parts answer. So we think what will get us close? Five times what will get us close to 42 without going over? And that answer is eight. So then we multiply eight times five is 40. We subtract that long division, hopefully coming back to you. 42 minus 40 is two. The next step, we're gonna bring down that next digit. And now we start those steps over. We're gonna divide 20 divided by five. There is an equal parts answer there and it is four. Four times five is 20. 20 minus 20 is zero. Now you can just know if you know the rule that if there's just a zero there, we have a zero left. There's gonna be a zero right here, but if you're unsure, go ahead and finish working that out. Bring down that zero. Zero divided by five is zero. Zero times five is zero, and zero minus zero is zero. So each one of those units is going to be equivalent to 840 feet. Thus, the answer is C, all right? Now, I want to point out to you, if you had worked this out and divided by six, because you did not pick up on this picture started at the one on that ruler, that incorrect answer is there. And that makes it very tricky, okay? So now let's go to another question. Now this one is looking at weight. It says, which of the following is the most appropriate unit for expressing weight of a pencil? So some keywords in here we're looking at, weight and a pencil. Now, this one shouldn't take you very long. No computation is required. If we're looking at weight, we need to see which of these actually measures weight. So we have pounds, we have ounces, we have quarts, and we have pints, and we have tons. Quarts and pints we can eliminate because those measure not weight, but capacity. Now we can look at these, ounces, pounds, and tons. Well, if you've ever heard the word ton, you've probably heard the expression, it weighs a ton or a two-ton truck, or we should know that a ton is a very large unit of measurement. So hopefully you can rule that one out. Even though it does measure weight, it's too large for a pencil. So you should be able to rule it or narrow it down to at least pounds and ounces. And so if we're looking at pounds and ounces, you've just got to have some reference in your mind. Think about yourself. You weigh yourself in pounds. When a newborn baby is born, an average weight is six pounds, seven pounds, and some ounces. So pounds is actually still a little too big of a unit to use. And the correct answer here is B, ounces. Hopefully, because this is a time test, pacing is always gonna be a factor, you can work through this one really quickly and see that that answer is ounces. Now this next one, this is number seven on that practice test, and it is looking at perimeter. This problem requires some computation and a little bit of work. It also requires you to read carefully. So this says, use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. A glass tabletop is supported by a rectangular pedestal. If the tabletop is eight inches wider than the pedestal on each side, what is the perimeter of the glass tabletop? 
So let's look at this closely. First, we see, turn my pen back on, that we're looking for, oops, sorry, got back on a question, that we're looking for perimeter. And if you are familiar, perimeter means we are going to add all sides. Sometimes you can multiply if there are like sides, but we know that for perimeter, we are going to add all sides. Now, you've got to look closely. It's asking you for the perimeter of the glass tabletop, which is actually this exterior rectangle right here. We're not looking for the perimeter of that pedestal. And if you find the perimeter of the pedestal, you do that math, you'll see that wrong answer is there. Okay, so I want to point out to you, we've got to find the length of all these sides, but it actually doesn't give us that plain as day. So it tells us the length of this side of the pedestal is 36 inches. And the question tells us that the glass tabletop is actually eight inches wider. So we've got to figure out this and this. Well, it told us that was eight and eight. So if we're going to do a little math here to figure out that side, we're going to do 36. Now we could add eight and eight, or we could just add 16 because eight plus eight is 16. We do that math really quickly. And we determine that the length of this side is 52 inches, which also means the length of this side will be 52 inches. Now I'm going to change color just because this picture is getting a little messy and it can be a little hard to see. Well, I say I'm going to change color, but it's not being super cooperative with me. There we go. Okay. So we know the length of two sides. We know the top and the bottom. Now we need to find the length of this side. We know this much is 48 inches. It tells us that right here but we need to find this distance right here and this distance right here. We're missing those. Well, it told us it's eight inches longer on every side. So here would be eight inches and here would be eight inches. So again, we now have 48 plus eight inches on each side so we can add 16. I'm gonna do that math really quickly. You can follow along with me there. We get 64. So we now know this side of the tabletop is 64 inches and this side of the tabletop is 64 inches. Now we can just do the math to add all of those up. You can multiply a little bit. If that's faster for you, you can add whatever is more comfortable. You can do 52 times two, 64 times four. That's not multiplication, I'm sorry. That is addition. And we're gonna add these up. I find the addition to be faster. Uh, two and two is four and four is eight and four is 16. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Two and two is four plus four more is eight plus four more is 12. My mistake, trying to work a little too fast. See, we all make mistakes. Six and six is 12 plus 10 is 22 plus one more is 23. So our total perimeter here is 232 inches. So the correct answer here is E. Now I want to note again, if you forget to add those eight inches or if you just add it in once, instead of adding it in twice with these 16s, you will see that wrong answer is there. So they like to try to trick you. If you're working too fast and not reading carefully, you can easily make a mistake. So the math on this one is not that difficult. The tricky part of this one is reading carefully. Now let's go to the next question. This one's on time and problem solving. So Tara can develop two rolls of film in about 18 minutes. At this rate, how long will it take her to develop eight rolls of film? Now, some of you who don't know what rolls of film are because you're young and you don't remember those days, it doesn't matter, you can still solve this problem. So I'm gonna draw a little picture to demonstrate how this question is tricky. I can see so many people missing it because they just missed a simple detail here. So I'm gonna draw a little picture. Tara can develop two rolls of film. So she's got that two rolls in 
18 minutes. And it wants to know how long would it take her to develop eight rolls of film, okay? Now, a lot of people will just take that 18 times eight. And if you do that, you will see that that's 144 minutes or two hours and 24 minutes, and that answer is there. So that's a real easy trap to fall into. When really we're looking at two rolls is 18 minutes, so each roll is nine. So we actually have nine minutes per roll. Now to me, I like to solve this with basic facts because it's really easy, I can do it in my head. Nine times eight is 72 minutes. You could also do this in 18 minute chunks and you see, whoop, pen went a little crazy there. Let's see if I can get that back on track. Yes, 18 minute chunks and you could do 18 times four and also get the correct answer of 72 minutes. Now you notice 72 minutes is not an option up here. So this is where you have to have a little knowledge of time. There are 60 minutes in an hour. So if we take out that 60 minute hour right here, we now have one hour right there and 12 minutes. So the correct answer here is B. Correct answer here is B. So just know that's a tricky question. If you don't read carefully, you could easily miss this. And I'm sorry guys, I know my video is still frozen of my face, but you can still see all the work. So I'm glad that's working for you. Now let's look at another one. This one's an estimation and a problem solving question. So this one we're getting out of measurement and we're looking at problem solving. And guys, I can see how this one would be easily missed too. So let's read it and work through it together. The lowest point on earth is the bottom of the Marinera Trench. Don't worry if you can't pronounce it. See, we just go with whatever we think it is. At a depth of 35,840 feet below sea level. The highest point on earth is the summit of Mount Everest at a height of 29,000 28 feet above sea level. Which of the following is the best estimate of the distance between the lowest point and the highest point on earth? Now I'm gonna tell you what most of you would do if you were in a hurry. You would see what is the best estimate of the distance between those two. You would take the largest number and the smallest number and subtract it. You would even round it to make it a little bit quicker and that answer is there. That answer, or it's close, all right, depending on how you rounded. But if you rounded this to 36,000 and this to 30,000 feet and you subtract, you'll get A. Guys, A is not the correct answer. I want to give you a tip about word problems. I think it's super helpful to draw, draw a simple little sketch. So I'm gonna draw this. If this is sea level of earth, Okay, so there's sea level on earth. It is telling us that this trench that's way down here, this trench, that distance is 35,840 feet below sea level. It's telling us that this mountain up here, the peak of that is 29,028 feet above sea level. So if we want to find the distance between here and here, that total distance right there, it's not a subtraction problem, it's actually an addition problem. So we teach sometimes to look for keywords, like when we see between and we see two numbers, that's automatically subtraction. It's not in this case. Here's where that diagram is super beneficial. We want to add those two numbers. We want to add those two numbers because we've got to get this distance plus that distance to get the distance between them. All right, now another key word here was estimate. They're wanting you to do this math in your head, okay? Now, I'm gonna round, my initial gut was, well, I could round 35,000 to 40, and if I add 40, and I round 29,000 to 30, 
that would give me 70,000. Uh-oh, that's not an option, okay? We can rule out these because we know it's an addition, not subtraction. I wanna give you a tip. When you look at your answer choices, sometimes that'll tell you the place value to round to. So we have all these zeros behind the thousands place, and then we have a digit. That's telling us that we can round to the thousands place. So you can see this as 36,000 minus 30,000. And hopefully you can do that in your head. Hopefully you can do that in your head. Now, if you left this at 29, then you're making the math a little bit harder. So if we add those together, actually, you do round this to 29. That's my mistake. 29,000, again, see we're all human. And we're gonna get this, the addition there is going to give us, no, I was right the first time. Okay, see, we're all human. It's early in the morning in California. All right, so we're gonna round that to 36,000 plus 30,000. No, okay, okay. See, this is why we're human and this is why teaching is such a difficult thing. So. If we do this, yes, we're going to round that 36,000 and we're going to round that other digits or that other value to 29,000. We're going to add that together really quickly and we get 65,000, which is correct. I'm so sorry if I thoroughly confused you on that. So go back to what I just said. We're looking at the first place value that has a digit, and that tells us we're gonna round those to the thousands place. So when we round 35,840 to the thousands place, that's gonna give us 36,000, because eight is greater than five. And when we round 29,000 to the thousands place, that next digit is zero, so that nine stays the same, and we get 29,000. You add those two numbers together. Now, I'm going to tell you, this problem takes some time, so if you got stuck here, it's completely normal. You can see, I've been teaching for 28 years, and I had to stop and think about this one. It's really tricky. It's really, really tricky, and so I want you to be careful of that. Don't make the same mistake I did, okay? So round both of those to the thousands place. It's telling you that. The correct answer here is D, all right? Now we're gonna keep moving. I'm gonna give you some last minute tips before we run out of time. One of the things you need to know is format, test format. How many total questions and about how many you need to get correct. You need to know how many questions are gonna be on this math test and how many do I need to get correct. That'll give you some peace of mind as you work. Look at the style of questions. Are there a lot of word problems? Are, are they all multiple choice? You need to know those things. Know your time limits. If you get stuck on one, move on. This is a timed test, so you need to be careful with that. Familiarize yourself with the setup. What I love about the CBEST test is they have a computer-based tutorial where you can go in if you type in this link or you just Google it. You just go to that CBEST test prep page you will find the computer-based testing tutorials. Look for those and practice doing the online test. Not only do you need to do that, but practice your pacing. As you're working, you've got to be able to work quickly. You can't get hung up on a question. So even where I got hung up, you might just have to go with your best answer, flag it and come back to it. That's okay to do. Now, for more information, for more help, we're gonna have these live videos every week, and I hope you will tune in and check it out. If you have any questions or you would like to see us do some videos on specific things, you can drop those in the comment of this video. Again, this will be recorded and replay on our Facebook page. It will also be on our YouTube channel for the FTC or CTC playlist. Um, if you would like more resources or accesses to, access to our study guides, you can see those links here. I'm going to take a minute and check our comments and see if we have any questions, which we have not. 
So if you do have any questions later, just drop those in the comments. We do monitor those and we will come back and check them. Next time I will have this video working. Tomorrow I'll be live and present in your Facebook group. If you're unsure of that time, go look at our um, post from yesterday so you can see those times. And I will be here to answer questions, provide support, not live in video, but you'll see me open up a thread for discussion. So I thank you all for joining us today and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Thank you so much and I will see you soon. Again, this is Dr. Christy Mulkey with 240.